Hey everybody, Wandering Kid here. Welcome back to the final episode of this playthrough of Space Can. We're on the final board, end of the line, an unknown system. Now I am going to break my pattern here because this board, bluntly, is insanely annoying to pipe. So I'm not going to do it in front of you. Because, I, look at this, it's like a gerbil maze. What I will do is I'll walk you through the solution, but let's start on the story. So basically you're fighting a big old phantom ship, and you have to shoot a VGM laser at it, so you can phase lock the ship. That'll keep it from phasing out every time you shoot your missiles at it. Um, you also want to play dodging with the asteroids if you need to, and you have some thrusters for side-to-side -side movement. You start with, hey, look at this. Does this look familiar? Omega pseudoethene, sigma ethylene, and ethylene. It's almost like those last boards had a purpose. Up here in your missile launcher, you need to feed it a whole bunch of hydrogen and omega. So it needs two omegas for every 15 hydrogens you're going to feed it. Your piloting controls are simply um, H2. And your laser reactor is like the old laser reactor uh, where you have to feed in a crystal and then shove a xenon in and it'll shoot. This one needs a different cr uh, crystal style though. It needs the Sigma Pseudobenazine. So your hints for the sport. One of the easiest ways to jam yourself up is not being able to get Omega because you're backed up on the carbon that's attached to it. Hint two, you need a lot of hydrogen. Using carbon to help build Xenon makes sense. Hint three, Omega pseudoethene isn't going to provide you a tremendous amount of hydrogen because you're not going to be using a tremendous amount of Omega compared to everything else. Even though you can get jammed on it, you don't need a lot of it. However, you also shouldn't need to steer much once you nail something with the laser. Hint 4. One of your reactors is already on the board. You're going to have to build in the laser. Besides driving controls, you're also going to want to be able to determine if your laser fires or not. It can be very hard to target if he keeps disappearing to missiles. Okay. So let's begin. This board's going to take a while to go through even with everything built. Let's start with basics. We're going to take the ethylene and we're going to split it out into H2 and C2. Relatively simple process. Red's going to grab it. Going to take it apart. Hand it off to blue. Take it apart. Now you notice red's got some bonders going on over here. Let me restart that for you for a second. So watch what red's doing. It's going to sync up. It's going to come through. It's going to unbond once for hydrogen here. And blue's sitting here waiting. It'll also rebond the hydrogen, ship it, and then it's going to hand off to blue so that red can get going again. This is about as fast as I could figure out how to build this thing. Blue's going to come through, rotate round, Disconnect again to unbond VHs. Now you'll notice red's coming through and uh, now bonding it uh, for blue's unbonding. That'll ship out, sync up to let red know it's done, and rinse repeat. So it rotates there, it unbonds. The reason for this first bond is to uh, reattach the carbons, if I remember right. Let me just double check that. So they hand off. This comes up. Okay, this red bonds first, so everybody's got max bonds. Then blue does an unbond. So our carbons double bond and then single bond, leaving the hydrogens behind so that blue can uh, deal with them. Notice where the carbons are set up and the hydrogens are set up. That hydrogen pipe traces all the way up here. That is the feeder for our rockets. 
That's how we're feeding the rockets out. Um, so we need a constant flow, continuous, of burning off that carbon. Now, speaking of flow of carbon, omega pseudoethene is a pain in the butt because it's got this one little random C over here. And you start running out of inputs to be able to attach things into places where you can use them. Now, something you may want to notice downstream is this output pipe. Uh, but I'll show you why this output pipe is so insanely long in a minute. So we start with omega pseudoethene. And this is going to build us some H2 and omega C. So red brings it in, unbonds it here, sinks to blue. Blue knows that it can stay out of the way back here, comes up, builds off an H2, builds up another H2 off the rest of it, Flip flops out of the way, sends it, and red comes through and does it again. Relatively simple build. Possibly could be built faster, but I couldn't quite figure out any way that did it more effectively. That really mattered for anything upstream is really the problem. So up here, we're dropping off Omega for the uh, rockets we're sending out. And down here, we're shipping out carbon. This carbon pipe comes down here and over here into the same into this reactor, which we're sending the two carbons into. I'll show you what this one does in a second, but just keep in mind that all of our carbon is ending up in one reactor. Here, this is the Omega pipeline, and it's just built literally as long as I could possibly squeeze in everywhere I could so that I didn't end up with an Omega backlog um while everything else was trying to build out so that um this carbon constructor down here because i needed some place to put the extra carbon um if it were kept waiting wouldn't build out my laser so all this does i mean it's a pretty simple uh reactor takes apart the omega carbon sends them in two different directions and then waits for another one. Now down here is where we get interesting. This is the carbon reactor. Red is currently waiting on its first carbon to come in. So it grabs that, brings in this carbon. It does an unbond and then rebond. So I've got a chain of three carbons, which will twist up, drop off, and ship. It comes through. Blue sinks up uh, once up. Does it again. So I ship two three carbon chains out. Those are going to our laser reactor. Once that's done, it steps out of the way so red can go to work. I'm sorry, so blue can go to work. Now blue's going to grab one more of these. And it's gonna shove it in and turn it into argon, bringing this up to 18. Now it's gonna uh, simply feed in a ton more until we get up to xenon. And this flip-flop counter is how we're counting that. So the first time through, it goes out and grabs one. Next time through, it goes out and grabs another uh, C2. Third time through, it'll go grab another C2 and then it'll escape out. You'll notice up here, I've got a control D. That's to make sure that I don't um, use my laser until I'm ready to, sh uh, until I'm sure I can hit the other ship. So at this point, I've got my xenon, shut off all the flip-flops, and now I wait to shoot my laser. I'll have to show you how this gets built in a second. However, I want to show you piloting controls. In here, I've done my usual thing of F1 sends me left. Ships it to that, and I go left. You can see how much you kind of move. I mean, this is meant to be run at a higher speed. F2 sends me right. You can see that's going down to the lower pipe here. You don't typically need to move too much. And what F3 does 
is it lets me burn off my extra hydrogen in here as I need to. So when I hit F3, I come down here, I drop it off, tell Blue to grab that and hang on to it for a second. I flip flop through. Now that flip flop's important. I can't shut off my uh, F3 until I pass it again. They sync up, drop, ship simultaneously so I get no motion. And we come back in here to hang on to this. And quite often, you will, if you follow this build, you're going to have to uh, be able to dump hydrogen so that you don't end up with a capa uh, capacity backlog up here. Now, to show how this uh, reactor builds out, we're going to restart for a second. And this is where everything gets really complex, and this is what take, takes probably the most time for this board, is to get this straight. So red starts off, and at the beginning of its process, before it even does anything, it checks to see if it should go into an endless loop waiting for the crystal to be used. Next up, it's trying to bring in some sigma ethylene. Sigma ethylene is directly piped from the storage into the reactor. The ratios are correct. Once we have our two carbon chains, we have everything we need. So we're going to grab one half of it, and we're going to bring wait for one of our triple carbon chains from this reactor over here, who's waiting on our spare C from the Omega Splitter. Come on, there we go. So now we're going to sink, and we're going to use a very heavily controlled sink, because part of the problem is with the way bonder order works, you can't try and rebond all of these side components up at the same time. You can't unbond these carbons, which is what you have to do when you unbond these as you close in, and then rebond them across and down. What ends up happening is, is if these have the bo uh, bonder priority, these will overbond themselves and they won't bond this way or they won't bond across. So what ends up happening is you'll notice I bonded these in a really odd way. These three are bonded, these three are bonded, they're connected. Now I'm gonna resync one up, which will unbond between these two and rebond them together on a, the side and repeat the process. Now I've got this built correctly for later. So now I just uh, bring this over, drop that off, and we're going to go repeat the process. And red is now going to flip flop. It's going to turn around for me and drop it off. Um, blue runs into that bond briefly, comes over here, bonds once, bonds again. Now, because of bonder order, it doesn't, it can't, oh, excuse me, not because of bonder order. Because of max bonds on the center ones already having been built, two, one, and one, it can't build across the middle. Double bonds up across the top. Drops here, which is in the, inside the zone, can be anywhere in there. And now red waits for us to send it a xenon. Okay, now, if we bring this up to speed, I've got to go chase this ship around. I happen to know I can't do anything until he uh, reappears again. But I've got to burn off all that hydrogen while I wait. Okay. A little to the, oop, a little to the right. And fire the laser. Okay, now that I've caught him, now I can just literally sit on him. Keep smacking him with the laser and just keep firing missiles until the end of time. And I'm going to take a few asteroids to the face.
The asteroids are random. Sometimes you'll get hit by them, sometimes you won't. And there we go. Challenge complete. I'm sorry I didn't walk you through that the way I've walked you through all the other boards, but I assure you, you would have been bored senseless uh, waiting for me to rebuild all of that from memory. The first time I took on that board, I think it took me about three and a half hours. Uh, just trying to figure it out. I've got paper diagrams drawing out ratios and patterns, so... Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this series. I've certainly uh, enjoyed creating it for you. If you have enjoyed it, um, and you see Wei Lang, Sung any Ooh. Wei Lang Sun anywhere in the comments, you can thank him for suggesting that I do this series. As always, I want to thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed, please leave a comment or a like. They are always appreciated. And I'll see you for the next series.